Most of the world's leading statesmen at one time or another have come to the United Nations in New York City to speak on important matters of world concern. And thus it was that the United Nations played host recently to His Excellency President Ziaur Rahman of the People's Republic of Bangladesh. President Ziaur was greeted upon his arrival by the UN Secretary General Kurt Waldheim. After conferring privately with Waldheim and with the current President of the General Assembly, Salim A. Salim of the Republic of Tanzania, President Ziaur was escorted to the United Nations Main Hall where the General Assembly had been called to order specifically to hear the Bangladesh leader. Assembly President Salim formally welcomed President Ziaur. On behalf of the General Assembly, I have the honor to welcome to the United Nations His Excellency Mr. Ziaur Rahman, President of the People's Republic of Bangladesh, and to invite him to address the Assembly. In a hard-hitting speech, President Ziaur said that recent years have seen very little progress towards narrowing down the differences between the rich and the poor. He spoke first in his native Bengali, then spoke in English. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Janab Shavapati. Janab Mahashachib. Or Shamanito Pratinidhi Brindo. Bangladesh is John Agone Pakoteke Ami Apna Der Shadosh Shambhashan Janachi Jati Shango Shadan Purishadere Akados Bishesh Odibeshan Bangladesh Drishtite De Kotota Gurut Purno Aj Ekane Amar Upostiti Tari Shako Diche A Bishesh Odibeshaner ব্যবস্থা করতে দীর্ঘ সময় লেগেছে এই জন্য অনেক কষ্ট স্বীকার করতে হয়েছে সাধারণ পরিষদের ষষ্ঠ ও সপ্তম বিশেষ অধিবেশনের পরবর্তী বছরগুলোতে একটি নতুন আন্তর্জাতিক অর্থনৈতিক ব্যবস্থা গড়ে তোলার ব্যাপারে বিশেষ কোনো অগ্রগতি হয় নাই ধনী ও দরিদ্র দেশগুলোর মধ্যেকার বৈষম্য হ্রাস পাওয়ার বদলে দেখা যাচ্ছে তা বরং বৃদ্ধি পেয়েছে জাতিসংঘ সনদের আদর্শ এবং মানব অধিকার সংক্রান্ত ঘোষণার প্রতি আমরা সকলেই আনুগত্যশীল মানুষের মৌলিক দুটি অধিকার ক্ষুধা ও দারিদ্র থেকে মুক্তি সহ জীবনযাত্রার মান উন্নয়ন পূর্ণ কর্মসংস্থান এবং অর্থনৈতিক ও সামাজিক উন্নয়ন ও বিকাশের নিশ্চয়তা বিধান করতেও আমরা প্রতিশ্রুতিবদ্ধ দ্য ইউএন চার্টার অ্যান্ড দ্য এভলিউশন অফ দ্য এন্টায়ার ইউএন সিস্টেম আর বেসড অন দি কনসেপ্ট অফ গ্লোবাল ইন্টারডিপেন্ডেন্স অ্যান্ড কোঅপারেশন ওয়াই ডিড উই অপ্ট ফর গ্লোবাল ইন্টারডিপেন্ডেন্স What was the rationale behind it? Because we wanted to collectively maintain international peace and security, to build a world ensuring freedom, human dignity and justice, because the evolution of international society has made it manifest more than ever before that most problems today are interlinked and global in character. and that there can be no piecemeal solutions to these problems just as there can be no fragmentation of peace there can be no fragmentation of the world into segments of rich and poor without a serious threat to peace if we believe in the community of mankind we must accept mutual obligations and responsibilities towards that community but there are far more compelling arguments in favor of global cooperation as has been forcefully brought out in the report of the brant commission we commend mr brant and the members of the commission for their understanding 
Mr. President, the deteriorating international situation due to foreign military intervention in the regions far and near is totally incompatible with the objectives of the new international economic order. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you very much. Elsewhere in his major speech, President Ziaur called on the Organization of Petroleum Exporting Countries to provide oil to the poor and developing nations at lower prices and to invest in nations like Bangladesh. <laughs> Following his address, President Ziaur proceeded to the West Foyer of the United Nations Building, there to greet and chat with the heads of delegations to the UN. President Ziaur later was the honored guest at a luncheon hosted by Secretary General Voltheim. There remained one more major event on President Ziaur's UN schedule, a speech to a closed meeting of the Group of 77. Formed 15 years ago, the Group of 77 now numbers more than 100 developing nations, including the 30 least developed countries, as well as the OPEC nations. From the UN and New York, President Ziaur continued on his four-day visit to the United States by traveling to Washington for an important meeting with President Carter at the White House. President Ziaur flew from New York to Andrews Air Force Base outside of Washington, then boarded this helicopter to fly from the airport to the Washington Monument grounds not far from the White House. The United States has been a staunch supporter of Bangladesh since it won its independence in 1971 and President Carter made it a point to take time off from a busy campaign schedule to meet with President Ziaur. The Bangladesh leader was greeted by Secretary of State Edmund Muskie as the helicopter arrived near the White House. From there, he was whisked to the Oval Office for a private meeting with President Carter. High on the agenda of the talks between the two presidents was U.S. aid to Bangladesh, aid which totaled some $84 million last year. Bangladesh has received commitments of $1.5 billion in aid this year. High among the aims of Bangladesh under its dynamic 43-year-old president is doubling of its agricultural output. Our land has the capacity, but it is badly organized, President Ziaur told newsmen in Washington. Bangladesh, with 80 million people crowded into a small area, is embarking on a new five-year plan with emphasis on agriculture. During the meeting in the Oval Office, President Carter expressed his admiration for economic and political progress in Bangladesh under President Ziaur. While Ziaur thanked Mr. Carter for U.S. economic cooperation with his nation. President Carter also reiterated the theme expressed by President Ziaur in his U.N. speech, namely that major oil exporting nations should invest some of their wealth to create jobs for Bangladesh. President Ziaur told President Carter that he has invited foreign ministers of OPEC nations to a discussion on that very subject. On another important matter discussed by the two presidents, a White House statement said both chief executives called for the immediate withdrawal of all foreign troops from Afghanistan and Kampuchea. Both presidents noted with satisfaction the excellent state of relations between the two countries, the statement said, and agreed to work to further improve the friendship and understanding which already exist. Their friendship was evident in statements by the presidents to newsmen after their meeting. It's a great uh, pleasure for me this afternoon to welcome to the White House and to our nation President Zia, the very fine leader of Bangladesh. Since their War of Independence in 1971, tremendous progress has been made under his leadership and with the courage and determination of the people of his great country, with a population of about 90 million, and with uh, tremendous opportunities for economic improvement, President Zia has been in the forefront of making the lives of the Bangladesh citizens better each year. The world suffered along with Bangladesh in recent years because of extreme hunger and deprivation among the citizens there. But President Zia and I have been discussing in the last few minutes the possibility he says the inevitability that Bangladesh will 
in the near future be self-sufficient in food production, perhaps even able to export food to other countries. We also had a chance to discuss the advantages of democratization of the Bangladesh political system, the open and free election process, which resulted in the election of uh, President Zia, has been an inspiration to the world. Also, we have been very grateful that the leadership that President Zia has played personally, not only among the Muslim nation and the community there, but indeed throughout the entire world community. As a member of the United Nations Security Council, uh, Bangladesh played a very important and statesmanlike role during the difficult months just past. We are deeply grateful that uh, President Zia has come here. We observe with great interest his statement to the United Nations General Assembly, where he called upon the OPEC nations to uh, provide oil to the poor and developing countries of the world at uh, lower uh, prices and also encourage the OPEC nations with that tremendous influx of uh, capital to invest in the developing nations like Bangladesh to provide a better life and employment for the people there. Uh, President Zia, we are delighted to have you with us. It's an honor for our country to have you here. And we uh, share with you the basic principles in a completely compatible way as we face the future together. And I'm very honored that you would come here to pay me this visit. Mr. President, it has been a great honor for me and my delegation uh, to have the opportunity to meet you at a time when you are so very busy for the election and you have so much work at hand. Uh, Mr. President, let me tell you that how grateful the people of our country are to the people of uh, your great country for the moral support that was rendered to us. In fact, support in all possible manner. Those were rendered to us uh, during our War of Independence in 1971 and the massive economic aid that we received from you, from your great country. Thereafter, to meet the many necessities which otherwise would have, uh, if not met, would have uh, created tremendous problem for us. We are uh, very grateful indeed, uh, Mr. President, uh, for your special interest uh, for the development, uh, the economic development uh, in Bangladesh, for which uh, during your period uh, we have received uh, fullest support, uh, and especially in the food sector, the support that you have given us, I can assure you that our people are grateful to the American people and to you, Mr. President. Uh, and the short meeting that we had a few minutes ago, we had discussed uh, all possible aspects of our relationship, uh, and we discussed uh, some of the important uh, problems facing the world, both economic and political. And uh, I must say how happy I am that uh, in these cases uh, our views are identical. Uh, Mr. President, uh, the uh, important uh, role that your great country has played, the people of the United States and yourself, uh, to uphold uh, the Charter of the United Nations uh, for maintenance of peace and stability in the world is something that we praise you for and uh, especially your value that you attach to the question of human rights and human dignity is something that we all of us the whole world could be proud of uh, mr president i wish you success i wish the american people success and strides in the future thank you very much Presidency Hour left Washington for another brief stop in New York and then went on to Paris, France, saying as he left, President Carter has assured me of all possible assistance, especially in the agriculture sector.